As soon as you cut paracord, it starts to fray. And when you go to melt the ends, you do not want these excess inner strands poking out because one, they'll tend to burn and it'll release carcinogens, which are bad for you. And two, molten paracord is a burn hazard. Let me show you this. So here in my left, I already have a little bit starting to fray out. I'm gonna cut it. And before I manipulate anything or move it around, I just wanna burn it in its place. The flame is just gonna to go to the edge. I don't wanna stick the paracord into the flame because I wanna avoid any unnecessary fumes coming off this cord. Okay. Now when I melt it like this, I'll end up with a mushroom type end, a bead on top. That's one method. But look what happens when I melt all this uh, excess cord here or excess inner strands. Right, one, you're tempted to push the, the flame into the cord, which is bad. And it just takes a lot longer for it to meet the outer sheath. There we go, got it there. And you, you probably can't see it in the camera, but there's a whole lot of smoke in the air now. <laughs> On the left, I have the flush cord that I melted. On the right, I had the extra strands that were poking out. And you can see that it is a bigger bead on the right-hand side, but it does come with its risks. Now, if I don't want a flared end at the end of my cord, I can always use a piece of sacrificial paracord to prevent that from happening. So to do that, I'll just create a barrel knot going around my finger a couple times, and then I'll take that free end and poke it through. There we go. And then I have that window there. I'm gonna place my paracord through that window and then tighten up my barrel knot. Okay. Now what I'll do is cut that cord I use my torch. And while it's still molten, I'll just pull off my sacrificial cord. And now what I have is an end that won't get caught up on a knot if I need to pull it free. If you want to fuse paracord together, you must have two ends that are freshly melted. All right, so I'm placing both my paracord ends near the flame so that I can create an even melted end on both sides. And then I'm going above the flame here just so that I can work quickly and fuse the paracord together. Of course, watch out for your fingertips. You don't wanna accidentally put them into the flame. Now this is a freshly melted paracord bead here. Now, since I use two freshly melted ends of paracord, watch how strong this is. So you see, I couldn't pull it apart, and that's because I used two freshly melted ends of paracord. But watch this. So here I'm gonna melt both ends of paracord. All right. We'll let them dry. Now watch what happens when I put tension on this paracord that's been remelted. Now here's an old army trick. If I wanna run some ball chain through the sheath of the paracord, what I'm going to do is select all the inner strands except for one, and then I'll pull the rest of them out. All right, now I only have one strand left in my paracord sheath, and I'm gonna use my lighter to make a bead on this side. It's gotta be just large enough so that it doesn't fall through the hole on this side of the pole. Now all I have to do is pull on my single strand over on this side and work it through the sheath. This cord is hooking up my little fire starter here. Now while we're working with gutted paracord, one thing you can do to make a nice, clean, even bead is pinching it with pliers. Got my little pair of pliers here. I'm gonna pitch these ends together. Snip it off with the scissors and then melt it. Now this makes a nice low profile bead. It's the same method I used to keep my goggles on my helmet back in the day. And the other cool thing about this is it acts as a breakaway. Now here's one thing you may not have known. I'm gonna use this aluminum ferrule to demonstrate. So I've threaded it through. I don't want my ferrule to fall off this loop here, but at the same time, I don't want to tie a knot. Here's one option. I'm gonna take this socket and slip it through that loop and then pull everything tight. Now I'm gonna take some super glue and saturate the paracord around the socket. It 
Make sure you wait for it to completely dry. You don't want to get super glue on your fingers. All right, now that this is fully cured, I'm going to break it away from the socket. And now my paracord is going to maintain the shape. Now, one thing you want to pay attention to, if you want to maintain a smooth bend in your cord compared to this sharp angle here that was formed in, make sure that the glue doesn't seep all the way down to the ferrule. Stop about the halfway point. Now, this doesn't get crispy. If it were to get smashed, watch what happens. The paracord deforms a little bit, but it doesn't snap. Here I have an overhand knot tied into a double strand of paracord. Imagine this is the zipper pull on a zipper, and I don't want this knot to ever come undone. What I'm going to use is the outer sheath to another sacrificial piece and drop a bead of molten paracord into this knot. And as it's starting to melt away, I'm going to drop a bead of that molten paracord right under the knot. And this is what it looks like after it's solidified. It bonds very well to the cord. As you can see, you can practically weld the knot shut. And there's also a way to ice splice paracord. Join me next time for that one.